Adash Rajagopal, currently a graduate student in Gen Research Group at University of Washington. In this video, I will explain the fundamentals and exciting prospects of perovskite tandem solar cells, which has been the focus of my research over the last couple of years. Generation of electricity from clean and renewable energy sources is important for meeting our global energy demands in a sustainable manner. The graphic here shows the total reserves remaining for different non-renewable sources in comparison to the yearly potential of renewables. It is clear that solar energy surpasses by order of magnitude the potential of all other renewable alternatives combined. Technological advancements have continually decreased the price of solar power and increased the global installation of solar panels. However, solar power is still expensive compared to conventional energy sources and contributes only to a minuscule fraction of total energy generation. A typical photovoltaic system used for generation of electricity from sunlight is comprised of a solar module, inverter and several other support components. Currently, the solar module itself contributes to more than 50% of the total cost. Therefore, development of modules with lower manufacturing cost and higher efficiency is crucial to drive down the cost of solar power in future. One of the key metrics used to assess the potential of a solar cell technology is power conversion efficiency. It is the ratio of the energy output from solar cell with respect to the input energy from sun. Solar cell technologies have evolved with the discovery and emergence of new semiconductor absorber materials. Solar cells based on inorganic wafers such as silicon and gallium arsenide constitute first generation technologies. Solar cells based on inorganic thin films such as SIGS and cadmium telluride constitute second generation technologies. These technologies have the merit of high efficiencies over 20% but require the use of high cost processing techniques. On the other hand, third generation solar cell technologies based on organic thin films have relatively lower efficiencies around 12% but can be easily processed at lower costs. Recently, a new solar cell technology based on organic-inorganic hybrid perovskite has emerged. Perovskite solar cell technology embodies both high efficiency and low cost. Regardless of the technology, a single junction solar cell comprises an absorber layer sandwiched between positive and negative contacts. Essentially, as the sunlight hits solar cell, the light is converted to electrical carriers in the absorber layer and extracted by the contacts. The incident sunlight consists of different energies, ranging from infrared to visible to ultraviolet. Let's have a deeper look into the functioning of a solar cell to understand different losses. Absorber layer is a semiconductor with a characteristic band gap denoted as EG here. Energies equal to or greater than the band gap are absorbed and creates electrical carriers. Energies below the band gap are not absorbed and leads to below band gap loss. For energies greater than the band gap, a fraction is lost because of the thermal relaxation and leads to thermalization loss. In this view, let's consider two different cases of silicon and perovskite solar cells. Silicon solar cell, which has a lower band gap, has lower below band gap loss and higher thermalization loss. On the other hand, for a perovskite solar cell, which has a higher band gap, has higher below band gap loss and lower thermalization loss. The balance of losses constrains realizable efficiency for single junction solar cells and is given by the shockley quasar efficiency calculations with a maximum efficiency around 30% achievable using 1.1 to 1.4 EV band gap. Current record efficiencies for silicon and perovskite solar cells are approaching the SQ limit. So, how can we surpass the SQ limit? One of the most promising approaches to realize higher efficiencies is multijunction or tandem solar cells. A multijunction solar cell has absorbers with different band gaps tagged in a device. In this way, higher energies are absorbed in the front large band gap subcell and the unabsorbed low energies are absorbed in the back small band gap subcell. As a result, both below band gap and thermalization losses are greatly reduced and results in an improved light harvesting. Thus, compared to a single junction solar cell, an increased power output is possible in multi-junction solar cells due to reduced losses. The theoretical limit for multi-junction solar cells increase with the number of band gaps used in a device. 
Even in the simplest case of two junctions, the efficiency limit of 42% is significantly higher than the 30% SQ limit for single junction solar cells. The concept of multi-junction solar cell was first proposed in 1980s. And since then, successful demonstrations based on inorganic solar cell technologies have led to impressive efficiency records up to 46%. That said, these state-of-the-art multi-junction solar cells involve complex processing and are very expensive, ultimately inhibiting their use for terrestrial applications. This is where perovskite solar cells provide a unique opportunity. They can be easily manufactured by roll-to-roll -roll printing approaches at very low cost, making them attractive for both large-scale grid integration and small-scale niche applications. The efficiency of a single-junction perovskite solar cell has rapidly evolved in last five years, and the current record is 22.7%, which is comparable to other mature inorganic technologies. These exciting attributes are a result of inherent material characteristics of hybrid perovskites. The ABX3 perovskite crystal structure offers enormous flexibility with a broad compositional space. Typically, A is organic cation, B is metal cation, and X is halogen anion. Perovskites have excellent optoelectronic properties including strong absorption with sharp absorption onset, ultra-fast charge generation, and long charge transport, all of them very important for efficient conversion of sunlight into electricity. Perovskites can be processed using numerous processing routes suitable for low cost printing at scale. The combination of these incredible structure property processing aspect leads to very high performance of perovskite solar cells. Additionally, band gap of perovskites can be tailored by compositional engineering. The most commonly employed methyl ammonium lead iodide perovskites has a band gap of 1.6 eV. Metal site alloying facilitates band gap lowering with values up to 1.2 eV realized using lead tin alloys. Halide site alloying facilitates band gap widening with values up to 2.3 eV realized using iodine bromine alloys. A combination of low cost, easy processing, high efficiency and facile tunability thus makes perovskite tandem solar cells highly promising. Tandem solar cells can be made in either 4 terminal or 2 terminal configuration. In 4 terminal, subcells are mechanically stabbed on top of each other. This involves a simpler assembly but are expensive due to added components. Contrastingly, in 2 terminal, subcells are electrically connected. This requires current matching between subcells but are relatively cheaper. Both configurations have potential to provide efficiencies close to 40%. Two terminal configuration has a greater sensitivity for band gap combination because of the current matching requirement. Facile band gap tuning of perovskites open a wide range of possibilities. CIS solar cell with a low band gap of 1 eV can be used in tandem with a large band gap perovskite and has the maximum efficiency potential. The two subcells are connected in series by an interconnecting layer. Alternatively, commercially used silicon solar cell with 1.12 eV band gap can also be used in tandem with perovskite solar cells to further improve their efficiencies. In the other extreme, a small band gap perovskite around 1.2 eV can be used in tandem with a large band gap perovskite to form perovskite perovskite tandem solar cells. My research has been mainly focusing on development of perovskite perovskite tandem solar cells and CAS perovskite tandem solar cells. Let's take the example of perovskite perovskite tandem and look into the key components and fabrication process. A tandem device essentially combines a small band gap and large band gap single junction perovskite solar cell. The basic components of a solar cell include absorber layer, charge transport interlayers, a transparent electrode in the front and an opaque electrode in the back. The additional component in a tandem device is the interconnecting layer which connects subcells in series. Thus, in a tandem solar cell, voltage is the sum of subcell voltages and current is the minimum of subcells. The first step in the fabrication of a perovskite tandem is patterning of indium tin oxide coated glass via etching. Next, different layers in large band gap subcell are deposited using spin coating. This is a picture of a typical spin coater. 
In spin coating, a small amount of coating material is applied at the center of the substrate and then the substrate is rotated at high speed for spreading the material and evaporating the solvent to form thin films. Next, ITO layer is deposited via sputtering. This is a picture of the sputter unit and the figure insert shows the plasma glow discharge within the chamber during operation. Sputtering process basically involves the use of argon ions to bombard and eject atoms from the target surface, which gets deposited on the substrate to form thin films. Next, different layers in small band gap subcell are deposited using spin coating. Finally, the silver metal electrode is deposited using thermal evaporation. This is a picture of thermal evaporator system and the figure insert shows the geometry of source electrodes inside the chamber. Thermal evaporation process essentially involves resistive heating of the source material which creates vapor particles that gets deposited on the substrate to form thin films. This is a photograph of a final tandem device and an image of the device cross section taken using a scanning electron microscope. The demarcation of different layers and subcells can be clearly seen. Over the last couple of years, our research advances on both material and device level have led to exciting progress in development of small band gap, large band gap and tandem perovskite solar cell. Through this effort, we were able to achieve record performance metrics recently. Key results can be found in these highlighted publications. Thank you.